In a major breakthrough in Nepal's protracted peace process, more than 19,000 Maersh army personnel have formally come under the government control from yesterday. A special function was held in Shatnikor Cantonment in Chitwan district yesterday to mark the formal handover of Mao's fighters to the Special Committee on Army Integration. Prime Minister Madhus Kumar Nepal and the Unified CPN Mao's Chairman Prachan signed the handover declaration in the presence of top leaders of major political parties, senior ministers, heads of the security wings, UN representatives and heads of diplomatic missions. Indian tennis duo of Jayanda Pace and Mahesh Bhupati advanced to the third round of the Australian Open in men's doubles in Melbourne yesterday. They beat Argentina's Juan Monaca and Felicano Lopez of Spain 7-6-6-4 in straight sets. Pace and Bhupati will next play the Spanish duo of Tommy Obredo and Marseille Granolos in the third round. India to class South Africa in the fifth and final cricket one day at Centurion today. Now to end the bulletin, here are the main points. The talks between Iran and world powers on nuclear issue ended in Istanbul in Turkey without any headway. Prime Minister calls upon all concerned to observe maximum restraint in a sensitive state like Jammu and Kashmir. Trade between India and Bangladesh at Fulbury Customs Station has begun. And in sports, Leander Pace and Mahesh Bhupati advanced to third round of the Australian Open in men's doubles in Melbourne. India take on South Africa in the final ODI at Centurion today. And that is the end of this news bulletin. This is the General Overseas Service of All India Radio. We now bring you this commentary entitled Consequences of Global Warming. Scripted by Biman Basu, read by Lucy Caprian. The rise in extreme weather conditions in recent years have been taking a heavy toll of life and property around the world. The devastating floods in Australia, Brazil, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka are recent examples. France and Queensland. Australia has ravaged an area the size of France and Germany combined. On the other side of the globe, in the mountains of the southeast Brazil, more than 340 people have died after fierce mudslides swept away homes following heavy rains. At least 50 are still missing. Officials in Sri Lanka say over 1 million people have been affected by the peat flood there and have had to deal with overflowing sewage lines. So far, 23 people have been reported dead. There have also been unusual heavy snowfall and blizzards in parts of Europe and the United States this winter. According to environmental scientists, these events prove what they have been trying to warn us about for years. Global warming is not just a theory, it is real. The main cause of this is increasing amounts of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Greenhouse gases trap the heat radiated by Earth's surface, were heated by the sun. As a result, the average temperature of the Earth has risen by about 0.9 degrees Celsius. All of the increase in global temperature appears insignificant. It had had significant impact on the climate. Out of the 20th to warmest years on record, 19 have occurred since 1980. The three hottest years ever observed in recorded history have all occurred in the last 10 years. When the atmosphere gets heated, it leads to more moisture in the air because the whole water cycle speeds up in a warming world. There is more water in the atmosphere today than there was a few years ago on average. And as a result, there are more incidents of heavy rain and snow in summer and after winters as has been happening in recent months. Elsewhere, droughts have been seen to be more severe, as was seen recently in Russia. But the recent anomal anomalies or in weather seen around the world may be just the tip of iceberg. The Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change has concluded that global temperatures will 
likely rise by from 1.2 to 6.5 degrees Celsius by the end of the century, depending on different scenarios regarding greenhouse gas emissions. If this happens, sea levels will rise alarmingly and there will be huge changes in the volume and patterns of rainfall. There is likely to be more frequent, intense weather events, including hurricanes, droughts, blizzards, etc. The only way the Earth can be saved from the disastrous consequences of global warming in the future is by cutting down on the emission of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide. But nothing substantial can be achieved without concrete global action. Unfortunately, the international community has taken note of the possible consequences of global warming and taken steps at reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The first international agreement aimed at curbing greenhouse emissions was the Kyoto Protocol signed in 1997. But the biggest greenhouse gas emitter, USA, stayed out of the protocol, making it almost ineffective. The latest climate conference held in Cancun, Mexico, in December last year, adopted a balanced package of decisions that set all governments more firmly on the path towards a low emission program and support of enhanced action on climate change in the developing world. It was now for the nation of the world, especially the rich nations, to follow up Cancun conference with higher global emission cuts and the rapid launch of new institutions and funds to ensure a new era of international cooperation and climate change. Only then can be grasped that the recent summer floods and winter blizzards in many parts of the world be prevented. That was this commentary entitled Consequences of Global Warming, scripted by Bilal Rasu, read by Lucy Gabriel. This is the General Overseas Service of All India Radio.
We now bring you our next program, program of light classical vocal. In this program, we bring you Thumri by various artists. First number we have taken by the artist Shobha Kurutu.